looking for an interesting way to do a gladiatorial or melee tournament. Posted by Premaximum. Hey all, I'm running a campaign in Black Hack 2nd Edition right now, and my players have been invited to participate in a tournament-style melee by an NPC group. I am looking for ideas for running it that aren't just do combat. Anyone have suggestions? Why, yes, pre-maximum and anybody else who is interested in this concept, I do have ideas. And my biggest idea, the biggest thing I think you should do is look at how those kinds of those kinds of plots, those kinds of backgrounds are handled in things like movies. And if you notice in a lot of movies, and I assume, I don't know if there's any, I don't know if I've read any books that really revolved around gladiatorial arena. That's kind of the whole book. But if you look at, say, okay, I'll use one gladiator. You'll notice that there's battles, of course, in the arena, but a lot of the actual meat takes place outside of the arena. And I think this is a mistake that happens in a lot of games. <clears throat> and I can't say I've seen it personally because I haven't. But when I read up on how people are planning these, and I've read out some of them how they've turned out, I think the mistake a lot of GMs make is they put all their thought into what's going to happen in the arena. And and that can be fun. Right? There's nothing I'm not saying that, that you shouldn't think about what happens in the arena. How you can escalate battles, maybe how the arena changes. Is it a just a mundane arena? But even in a min mundane arena, if you go back to Gladiator, they could do some neat stuff. It's how they can reconfigure it, add water, add pits, add columns. You know, and I think if you read back at the stuff that the historical Coliseum was capable of doing, there's some really interesting, neat stuff. And that's before you add in the fact that we're probably playing a fantasy game where you have magic and all kinds of other stuff. So you can look at that and say, okay, there's neat stuff I can do with the combats. But I think too many folks, just, they just go down a rabbit hole of the combats. And then the only thing they tend to have, I see that often, is, well, they can bet on each other outside before, between matches. It's like, uh, okay, I mean that. Look, that there's there's gambling is fun, betting on yourselves, I suppose, as the party, or if you want to be funky and bet on other people and other brackets. If you're doing a, a tournament style game, is fine. But when we look at Gladiator, for example, you'll see that most of the movie, I think, as running time purposes, isn't in the arena. We all remember kind of the the first battle where everyone's kind of going. Nuts. I think there's maybe a second battle. And then I think they may have done kind of highlights. Yeah, I don't know. I don't, I, I'm, it's been a while since I've been glad here, but there's maybe, I, I think maybe six battles in the arena. Uh, and not, I'm not even including the final duel with between Maximus and uh, I forget his name, the bad, the bad, bad, bad Caesar. And there's the one where he fights the the veteran uh, gladiator. There's the, what were the, they reenact that battle from the Punic Wars. There's the first battle where he's, he's chained to another guy who's peeing himself and, I don't know. There's another one where the I forget the one guy who I think was always like, like uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger stunt double in the Conan movies or something like that, or he was somebody I don't know. He he was like a red is the god's color, you know that one. But uh, Gladiator's over two hours long, and there's just a four or five battles in there, and those battles are not D and D battles. They're not lasting potentially an hour as you're running them. They're fast. So you think about well, you take out those five six battles. What else is going on? Well, a lot. Now, in, in Gladiator, they have the option, which you will not have in your game, of having, you know, a B-story Commodus. As the bad, bad Caesar was Commodus, right? Of, of what's happening with Commodus and, and Commodus' sister and, and, and that whole thing. And a little bit with the senators talking, right? We don't, we don't, you don't have aspect of that. But there's going to be a lot of time should build in outside the arenas for the story within the story. So we have a group. They invite the players to commit and play in this tournament what's really going on it could be well is the tournament there just for the reason it might be stated on the tin which is you know bread and circuses we're just going to have have fun to take people's minds off whatever or just put on an entertaining show and make some money through betting and through attendance and selling t-shirts and, and blankets and tapestries with the winners on it of course that's one way and then if that is that then maybe you could think about well you have this thing coming to town for a week or two weeks however long this tournament's supposed to last that becomes an event that other forces will try to use to their advantage okay so you have gambling well that might mean that if there's a thieves guild or some kind of mafia type organization that's going to want to get a piece of the gambling action there's going to be a lot of money there. So going back to thieves again, are people going to make a play to try to bust in and take the earnings wherever they're stored? Is there going to be some kind of heist? Are the players going to think about, well, we could plan some kind of heist. Is it going to turn into something? I just watched a, 
this movie with Batista where it's it's basically die hard in a soccer stadium where these these terrorists they take over the soccer stadium they lock it down using the using the the soccer stadium's own security controls to lock it down and they're looking for a particular person in the crowd that could be an angle is somebody prominent going to be there right as in in the gladiator concept right there in the owner's box so to speak is bad caesar commodus Maybe someone wants to get to Commodus, and that could be a plot that is ongoing. Perhaps it's also a way for people to meet kind of undercover, right? You're going to have hundreds, thousands of people in this area. What kind of things, what factions might be able to meet up and link up and do so in a kind of a way that's basically going to be uh, given camouflage by the fact that there is a gladiatorial tournament going on. There are other movies, too, that do something similar. I, I think of, you know, Jean-Claude Van Damme, Bloodsport has some similar. I think there are more. there's more fighting in Bloodsport. That one, it, they have some fun with showing a bunch of the different combats, but you'll notice that John claudes not in that many of them, and he has his own. There is another B story of what's happening kind of within the tournament that, of course, ties into him versus, uh, what's his name, Bolo Young at the end, but there's something, I think there was like a government agent, and there's 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 some other things going on, but it's not just wall-to-wall -wall fighting. Now, in Bloodsport, I think they, some of the fun of it, I think, is showing all these different fighting styles going off against each other, but they do it in very fast manner. Those 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 fight sequences, especially the ones without Van Damme in them and maybe the other guy, the guy from Animal House, I think is in, I forget the, the big, big kind of hairy dude from Animal House is in it, or not Animal House, I mean uh, Revenge of the Nerds is in it. They're very short, right? So they're, they're almost like, hey, you know, for the audience in, in a visual medium like film, it works it works out kind of nice because it's like five minutes maybe even less I, it's been forever since i've seen blood sports so i haven't timed these scenes out but really short quick they just do a couple of highlights and then bam it's over it's that kind of thing hard to do in terms of an actual combat you could kind of narrate some moments but again you want to think about well when the party's not fighting what's happening because i actually think that what's happening outside the stuff especially if you're able to weave it into the fighting that's going to make all the difference. If it's just going to be essentially a, a corridor, if you think of it metal, like just fight, 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 end, that's kind of boring, right? And in a gladiatorial system, you don't even have the the stuff that's in a dungeon to intersperse the fighting. You are literally, it's, it's the equivalent of going through uh, a, a dungeon, which is just room, door, room, door, room, door, room, and in each room is a combat, right? So you really want to give them stuff to hold their interest outside of it, uh, let them interplay with things, let them, you know, see what else is going on. It's also, it could be a great way to add some world building in, but you want to really build in that stuff that's outside the combat. And too often, all I see is people talking about well, what are they going to do in the arena. And in the arena is maybe the, I think, kind of the least interesting part from a DM's perspective, and I think somewhat from the player's perspective. And, and you have to remember, right, if you, if you build in too many of these combat events, they're going to take their toll on you creatively because it's hard to keep upping the ante. It's easy to go from, okay, it's sand, now we're gonna have water, now we're gonna this, but you know, you start keep trying to do that, and especially in a fin fantastic sense, you can really burn through your imagination, and it can also get over overwhelming. So really think about what else is happening, what other plots, what other, what, what are factions gonna do with this whole event, and then how how can I pull the party potentially into, those, into these factional things, or make them aware of it, or perhaps they're attached to factions, so that might play into it. Because remember, the PCs are going to be, if, assuming they're in this tournament, maybe they get to be in a different part of the arena. And maybe there's something that the factions need that are where the gladiators stay and not where the audiences are in the bowels of the arena, and only the party can get there. If some kind of faction sponsor can get them a message, maybe they have to go under the arena. And what could be under the arena? I don't know, but it might be adventurous, right? But they might have a time limit because they got to get back for their match. So better hop to it. All right, got some stuff in the chat. I just want to hit through here. John Lennon says, going back to one shots, always create the characters for them. Yeah, Terrence says, for goodness sake, figure out how you're going to adjudicate gambling beforehand. Yes, right. I th <laughs> it goes without saying, if you're going to have a gambling system, don't run it ad hoc. Keep track of the odds. Come up with some way where you can calculate the odds that seem seems fair. And then don't complain if the players win. If you're using some kind of mass combat rule or just some way to hand wave, I'm just going to roll some D20s and that's going to say which ones win. And you come up with a guy who's a thousand to one. And that one PC says, I put all my cold gold in the center on the thousand to one and they hit, give it to them. Don't start thinking about, well, how can I screw them out? How can I get rid of this gold? 
you created that problem. You don't want guys with thousand one odds. Don't do it for fun. And then be surprised when it happens. Because it will happen. It's like a guarantee. I guarantee it will happen. Now that thing says exactly 100% neat story outside of the ring. Also use sports movies, not just fighting movies. as templates, Rocky, even Major League's. Major League or Mighty Ducks, conflicts and growth happen around the ring. Yes. The reason why I think more of using fighting movies is because they tend to be in one place. You don't that you're, not that you're a gladiator fight has to be, right? But the nice thing with Rocky is you get, or a sports movie, is there's weeks between, well, days and weeks between things, right? So Rocky, you're training for a fight, you have weeks. So you got a lot of time to play with all kinds of other stuff and movement of place. With uh, fighting movies, usually they, they constrict that. If you think of things like Game of Death, you're on, you're on an island, or Mortal Kombat, right? They, they shrink down how far you can move, which really puts more pressure on you to have stuff where they are because usually you, you're, you've taken away either just because of the time between the fights or because you're, you're following that kind of template that they don't get to leave and go home. They don't get to go on the road. They don't get bus rides. They don't get to go to different towns. They don't get to leave and have adventures at their hotels. Like usually it's kind of like you're on the premises and you're staying on the premises until it's over. Now, you don't have to run your fight like that. That might be an interesting alternate way to look at these gladiator fights is what if it was a tournament that toured the kingdom or the empire or the whatever territory they're in so you can get some of that. You can get extra downtime in between ones. Different factors can come into play, right? You can, you can do all that. There's no reason not to, but a lot of times they seem to follow that sort of you're in the spot and you're running through fights until you drop or until you are victorious. So keep in mind what kind of template you're using and think about how you might take those templates and kind of turn them on their head a little bit. You know, there's no reason to follow it, right? If there's a different way to do it and there's no reason to keep them trapped in a singular place, then, you know, don't. But those are my, those are my suggestions. Let's just see what, let me, wait, before I forget, vote for your editor. Let's see what some of the commenters said in case they hit upon some things that I did not think. Vaden says, let's see. None of these are actual mechanics, but try to throw in some intrigue and downtime between rounds. Write up a short description of a few patrons and maybe their motivations or relationships with one another. Put some small benefit to befriending one or more, like one will help you cheat, one will give you intel, etc. Is this is the tournament to the death? What are the stakes? Yeah, those are decent things. But you know, you notice here, he's he says, hey, throw in some downtime, but he's he's reflecting it back towards the fight. Whereas I'm saying is have stuff going on that's not just reflecting the fight, but other things. Maybe there's someone on an opposing team who in some moment is going to planning to kill the bad Kaiser, the bad Caesar. So you're trying to get the, you're trying to figure out who of these other teams, where is the, where's the guy, you know, who, who's, you know, who is, who is the, who is this, uh, this assassin who's masquerading as another gladiator and then you're trying to figure that out and worm your way. Maybe talk to them. Maybe see how they fight. You know, whatever, right? It's all these kind of things you can do. Not just, how can I get a little bonus for the next fight? That's fine. And I'm not saying you can't have those things. But don't make that all that's happening in your, in your tournament setup. Get the crowd involved. Also fine. But again, right, we're, we're, they're reflecting back on the fight and not so much on the other fight. And, and then someone, again, talking about combat. I think these are all fine, but like I said, they're, I feel like they're all falling into that same trap of just looking at the combat part. Look outside the combat. Look, look beyond. What is the tournament's purpose? Who's putting on the tournament? Why are they putting on the turn tournament? And then who can take advantage of that tournament for what purposes and why? Think about those questions and really build that up. I think once you start thinking about that stuff, the tournament itself becomes the least interesting part. But that's me.